acts of War atrocities and danger dedicating to killing us. The RFID is a technology that uses tiny computer chips the size of a grain of sand or even smaller hooked up to miniature antennas to transmit information about items at a distance. Back in 1999, Procter & Gamble, Gillette, and MIT got together to find a way to commercialize this technology and make it small enough, make it efficient enough, and make it low cost enough to essentially their dream is to put one of these tiny uh, computer chips on every physical item manufactured on planet Earth. You've probably heard of RFID. It's all over the news. Global retailers, shipping companies, even the U.S. Department of Defense are using it now to define the future of supply chain and inventory management. If you haven't heard about how this tiny technology is making big changes in the way the world identifies, tracks, and manages everything from pistachios to engine parts, you might want to get out more. Would you kindly tell me what you're doing in the road? I'm with the help desk. You're lost. You're headed to Fresno. Fresno, right. This is the road to Albuquerque. How'd you know we were lost? The boxes told me. The boxes? RFID radio tags on the cargo. Helps track shipments. The boxes knew we were lost. Maybe the boxes should drive. Have you ever paid a toll without slowing down? Sir. Forgot your receipt. Check outlines. Who needs them? Have a nice day. This is the future of e-business. The latest technology for identifying people at the point of sale, for identifying people when they make purchases, is actually the implantable chip that you can actually embed directly into human flesh. Uh, it's a tiny glass capsule about the size of a grain of rice. It contains an RFID computer chip uh, with a coiled antenna, and it can transmit information also at a distance. Homeland Security folks, uh, the Department of Defense and others have uh, expressed an interest in being able to more closely monitor the U.S. populace. And one way to do that, of course, would be being able to determine who buys what and uh, where they take those things. Radio waves can travel through walls, they can travel through wood, they can travel through the things we normally rely on to protect our privacy. Uh, for example, your purse, your backpack, your pocket, anything you're wearing or carrying. Kraft Philadelphia Cream Cheese has been tagged with RFID and sold to consumers, as have uh, Mach 3 razor products and other Gillette razor products, without the knowledge of the consumer. One of the tiny chips could actually even be the, the, the dot on the letter I on the back of the fine print on a package that you purchase. They were talking about having reader devices in every airport, on every bus, on every train, on every port, on every dock. One of the most worrisome applications of RFID are proposals to put them into cash, meaning that you would be able to track every banknote, where it had been, who it had been issued to, and create, in essence, an audit trail. That would, that would um, essentially take away the anonymity of cash that we now enjoy today. The ATM machine itself, as the money was, came through the, the roller device, would be, would be reading each number. And they would know who you are because, of course, you identify yourself at the bank before you take money out. And down the road, when you go to pay um, at a major retailer, it would also be possible for them, as they're putting the money into the cash drawer, to simply feed it through a little reader device. It would go in, it would uh, tag that number and transfer possession from Aaron Russo, say, to Walmart. I'm here today to introduce the latest in our benchmark series, the Metal Mount RFID Tag Benchmark. Metal Mount RFID tags are important because there's been a myth out there that metal and RFID just don't mix. Well, the technology has evolved to the point where metal does work on RFID, and we're here to prove it today. The military is already using uh, some type of GPS on some soldiers, but what more can be done? CNN's Brian Todd takes a look in this week's Tech Effect. Just about every U.S. military vehicle in Iraq has GPS or another type of electronic tracking device so their commanders can monitor them. It's called Blue Force Tracking. Some law enforcement units back home have experimented with chips that give physical data about officers but don't have tracking signals. 
One option, placing a tracking microchip under a service member's skin. Former U.S. Special Operations officers tell us they believe that's being developed. Current military officials won't comment on that. A microscopic tag being planted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that. Mark my words before your tenure is over. Right now, everywhere in the United States, it is perfectly legal for a company to place an RFID tag, say, in, in your shoe, sandwich it between the layers of your shoes. Uh, we've seen prototypes of those at trade shows. Sell that pair of shoes to you and use it as a tracking device. Albrecht, the ACLU, and other civil liberties groups want a public assessment of the technology. But so far, they've found few friends in Washington. Although Bove calls the technology neutral and is quick to praise the benefits, he agrees that consumers need safeguards. For Albrecht, a first step would be labeling all RFID products. When you really envision a world in which every physical object can be numbered and tracked, a physical world in which people can be numbered and tracked, in which RFID implants can be put into individuals, and maybe even in babies at birth, and, and every move that we make can be identified and logged in a computer database, you begin to raise some very frightening questions, I think, about power. Such discussions are only beginning in Washington, but a full-fledged debate may need to take place in the very near future. We were going to do RFID, and... We, uh, on several levels, you know, how hackable, how reliable, how trackable, et cetera, et cetera. And we, uh, one of our researchers called up Texas Instruments, and they arranged a conference call between, uh, I think, Tori and the head producer over there for the other team, Linda Wolkovich, and uh, one of the technicians at Texas Instruments. This was, they were supposed to have a conference call to talk about the technology on, like, Tuesday at 10 a.m. And Tuesday at 10 a.m., Linda and Tori get on the phone, and they, uh, Texas Instruments comes on, <clears throat> along with Chief Legal Counsel for American Express, Visa, Discover, <laughs> and everybody else. I mean, and I got chills just as I described it. They, they were way, way outgunned, and they absolutely made it really clear to Discovery that they were not going to air this episode talking about how hackable this stuff was and Discovery backed way down being a large corporation who depends upon the revenue of the advertiser. One of the emerging technologies that people are talking about here, radio frequency ID tags or ARFIDs, um, they're in passports now, they're in credit cards like this new American Express credit card. And with me here is Pablos, who's a hacker. Hi Pablos. Hi there. And Pablos, one of the areas you've been doing some research in is the security or lack thereof in these RFID enabled credit cards? What'd you find out? We were able to decrypt the data by getting a reader like this off of eBay for $8. On the screen, what I'm seeing is the, wow, the card name, the expiration date, the name on the card? You'll get all that data off most cards. Yeah. So now we can take that, go online, start shopping. So what does this tell you? The credit card industry understands very clearly that creating a secure system isn't really the priority. Creating a system that feels secure to the user is. In reality, it's easier for me to get numbers now than it was before with the old, old card. Now all I got to do is get near your ass with my reader. These technologies will not make us safer. I think they'll make us sitting ducks for Big Brother. Dr. Katherine Albrecht also compiled 16 years of studies she says prove the chip can cause cancerous tumors. It's clear as day that these tumors were not only malignant, but they metastasized, they spread to the lungs, the liver, the thymus, the, the, the brain. These pictures show the tumors growing around the actual chip in the mice and rats. Certainly the company, I mean, they, they've done, I think, a, 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 a tremendous job of keeping that information under wraps for the last several years. We sat down with the chief medical officer of Verichip and asked about the link to cancer in mice. Yeah, I, I am not aware. I mean, I would have to take a look at uh, what, what's, being, uh, what's out there right now. I'm not aware of any, any issues at this point. Okay, I, I see that you have a wallet sitting here. This almost looks like a... So that's a, that's a stainless steel wallet that you can put a card like this in. It, um, you wow, can... you're not kidding. So I'm going to put this American Express card in here. And you put it in there. The chip, and now we're going to try to swipe it again. Right, the thing won't beep at all. There's no beeping. Yeah. So the answer to credit card companies trying to pass off our bids is stick everything inside tinfoil. There you go. <laughs> tinfoil hats for your credit cards. You can use any manner of blunt objects to smash in the chip right there. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but there's usually an indentation. Yeah, get it on yeah. the reflection. Yeah. 
Let's get rid of it. Be careful not to hit the mag stripe. You could smash the hell out of the chip. That's encouraged. Yeah. That chip's not broadcasting anything. It'll still work in any regular ATM or at the store when you're swiping it. Acts of atrocities and danger. Continuing dedicating danger to killing us.